David here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another fountain pen review. Today I have for you a look at a couple of different things. I have a limited production special edition fountain pen, as well as some premium fountain pen nibs, all of which are from Caveco. Uh, the pen is the AL Sport in Vibrant Violet, and I have two of Caveco's premium nibs to share as well. What I'm going to do today is go over the parts and features of the AL Sport, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about it. I'll show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample where I will discuss more about the premium nibs that they are now offering. Uh, thanks again. Go out to the good folks at Caveco for providing the items you will see today for review. Uh, Caveco is a company which over the years has really had some highs and lows. Uh, it's a German company which began manufacturing pens back in 1883 under the name of the Heidelberg Dip Pen Factory. Then in 1899, two gentlemen with German names I would definitely butcher if I tried to pronounce them took over the company and began using the Caveco name. Um, after World War I and the economic crisis in Germany, the company changed hands again and became one of the first German ma manufacturers to use injection molded plastic techniques. Uh, the company ceased production in 1970, but was resurrected in 72. It closed again in 81, but then was revived again in 1995 for the current iteration of the company most of us are familiar with today. The Quebeco Sport was first introduced in 1913. As you can see here on the left, it looked different than the modern versions of the pen. Speaking of the modern versions of the pen, uh, they arrive in this lightweight metal box. Uh, these Caveco Thames are very, very cool. Uh, most packaging is rather disposable, uh, but these containers are uh, definitely something that you can repurpose for something else uh, if you don't keep your pen in here. The lid opens up and we have a couple of things. We have a nice Caveco sticker. There is some uh, warranty information with a little history on it about the company. And then uh, actually inside the pen, there was a standard international cartridge uh, as well as a blank cartridge, which is really helpful to use. Uh, you can basically fill that up with your ink of choice. And then inside here, we have the pen. This is the Caveco AL Sport in Vibrant Violet. Uh, as I mentioned previously, it is a limited production special edition version of the AL Sport. Uh, the AL Sport is made from aluminum and is available in tons of different colors. Uh, there are even some that I feel look pretty cool which have what's called a stonewashed finish and the pen arrives looking rather worn in with lots of dings and wearing on the material. Uh, this violet model here is more of a standard solid finish. Um, I really like the color. It provides a pop of color without being too over the top. Uh, the AL Sport, in my opinion, is the epitome of a pocket pen. Uh, when I think of an ideal pocket pen, the Caveco Sport model, which is also available in many different plastic versions, definitely fits the bill. Uh, let's start by taking a look at the cap. It is inlaid with the Caveco logo in gold-plated metal. Um, I mentioned two gentlemen taking over the company in 1899. Well, the KA comes from the name of one owner and WE comes from the name of the other. And CO stands for company. And that's how they came up with the Caveco name. The end of the cap is rounded, but it quickly transitions into an octagonal faceted design. Uh, this faceted design is nice because it really acts as a roll stop as well. Uh, on the barrel, it's printed with some company branding. Um, you can purchase a clip for this pen. This is what the clip looks like on a Skyline Sport, the plastic version of the pen. Um, it just slides right off, but the tension is tight enough that it's not sliding off on its own. Um, when I purchased this Skyline Sport, um, it was uh, rather early in my pen journey and I really wasn't into clipless pens. Um, and while this clip is nice uh, and it functions really well as an option, um, I've really grown to feel that it kind of defeats the purpose of this pocket pen. So when I'm using my Skyline Sport, I tend to use it without this clip. Uh, the cap tapers down to a medium-sized step down to the barrel, which is straight for about an inch before it angles down slightly to the end, and on the very end is a little dimple. 
Now, on the injection molded plastic version of the pen, that little dimple is left over from the manufacturing process. Um, I'm uncertain for this aluminum version if that dimple is actually necessary during production or if it's just added there so that each of their sport models, no matter the material, kind of has a, a similar look and feel to it. The cap twists off in a single rotation, and underneath we have a gold-plated stainless steel nib. I believe it's a number four. Now, this is the standard nib which comes with the pen, but during the writing sample, I'll talk more about the premium nibs which are available. Um, I believe these premium nibs will fit all of the AL Sport series, the, uh, the Lilliputs, and some of the larger Caveco offerings like the Student, but I don't believe they fit the plastic sport models. Uh, those nibs are mostly friction fit as opposed to a nib unit. Uh, here's a sneak peek at the premium nibs compared to the standard one. The premium nibs are still stainless steel as well, uh, with one plated in gold and the other silver colored one uh, does not have any plating them, uh, that I'm aware of. Uh, you can see here that there is a difference in the nib stamping, and I'll get to the other differences in these nibs during the writing sample and let you know if I feel that they're worth the additional cost. Uh, these standard nibs are available in extra fine, fine, medium, and broad. And the premium nibs are offered in extra fine, fine, medium, broad, and double broad. And here's a look at the plastic feed. The section is slightly concave and fairly short. Um, it transitions into the cap threads. Uh, even though the threads are metal, I don't find them to be sharp or uncomfortable if your grip should rest on them. Uh, with the section being so short, I do find my grip will have contact with them on a fairly consistent basis. Um, this barrel is very short, uh, but for me, it's usable unposted. If I'm just jotting down a, a quick note that I might use it this way, but this pen is really designed to use posted. Um, it posts deeply and securely, and the additional weight of the cap is really distributed nicely across the back of the pen, and it's very comfortable in the hand. This is a cartridge converter pen. It accepts standard international cartridges, uh, one of which, which I showed you, is included, uh, but a converter is sold separately. The barrel is too short to accommodate a standard converter, so Caveco offers this mini plunger. Um, it holds enough ink to make it worthwhile, and it operates well. Uh, for me, it's worth the additional $6 in order to have a converter which operates with this pen as opposed to being tied to using cartridges. Not that it's a big deal to manually fill up a cartridge with your ink of choice. Um, while the plastic versions of the Sport are perfect pens to eyedropper with the metal used in this AL model, eyedropping would not be recommended. The Caveco AL Sport retails for $90 and is available at a wide variety of retailers. Uh, chances are that your favorite retail carries the Caveco line. Um, I feel that price is reasonable for what you receive with this pen. Um, I will say that it took me a while to, for the sport design to really grow on me. Um, early in my pen journey, I, I resisted purchasing a sport for the longest time because I, I really wasn't sure how I felt about the design. Uh, it's a bit quirky, uh, but after using my uh, sport, which is uh, one of the Skyline sports, uh, the design grew on me and I appreciate it more for what it is, a great pocket pen. Uh, okay, now it is time for some measurements some size comparisons, and a closer look at the Caveco Premium Nib, uh, as well as the writing sample. So here we go with some size comparisons for the Caveco AL Sport in the Vibrant Violet. Uh, I really like this color. It is, as the name would imply, vibrant, uh, but I don't think that it's uh, too over the top and too bold. It's kind of a, a dusty purple. In regard to some size comparisons, here it is with a Caveco Skyline Sport, the plastic version of the pen. Um, here it is with a Shown Design Pocket 6. And then here it is with another Caveco model, which is the Student, which isn't a pocket pen, which is one of their larger models, but something that I'll be reviewing in the near future. Then in regard to a few other pens, here it is with a Pilot Prera, and then here it is with a Twisby Mini, and then here it is with a Twisby Vac Mini.
in regard to some uncapped comparisons, let's take a look at it posted since that's the way you're going to be using it most of the time. Here it is with the Twisby Mini. Um, here it is with the Shone Design Pocket 6. This is the faceted Pocket 6. And here it is with a Pilot Prera. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the premium nib. The premium nib also shows up in a little tin of its own. Uh, this is what that tin looks like. It's still pretty cool. And you open it up and it is just a nib. I showed you close-ups earlier, but this is again what the premium nib looks like. There's two different versions. There is one that is gold plated and then there is this one, which is just straight standard uh, stainless steel. I don't believe it's plated in anything. Um, the main difference in these nibs is the tipping. You can see here in this microscope shot that the tipping on the one on the right, which is the premium nib, is a little bit larger. Um, it is a little less pointed. It basically results in a more buttery feel as well as a higher ink flow. Now, I know this is tough to see, but this top section here is written with a premium nib, and then the bottom section here is with the standard nib, and they're both mediums. Uh, and I did find that the ink flow was a bit greater. You can see the ink is a little bit darker here than it is on the bottom. Uh, reverse writing, they were about the same, not the greatest, uh, but it did feel considerably smoother, uh, and the ink flow was greater. But I thought it was a little strange that even though the ink flow was greater when I did the uh, smears there, the smear was greater on the uh, standard one, um, but the, uh, the premium nib is very nice. They retail for $44, and I do feel that if you're purchasing one of the more expensive Quebeco models, then it's worth the investment to do so. Their standard nibs are nice, but these premium nibs are very nice. And just one more look, because I have it loaded up here on the pen right now. This is what the gold one looks like. This is gold plated, not solid gold. Um, when you're writing with it, it still feels firm like a stainless steel nib. But as I mentioned before, it does feel considerably smoother. So here we have the Caveco AL Sport. And this is the Vibrant Violet. This is a medium premium nib. I'll say MP for medium premium. And the ink that I'm using, appropriately enough, is Caveco. And it is Summer Purple. This is what the ink looks like. Um, you know, it's an ink that really matches the color of this pen well. Um, kind of a, a lighter, dustier purple. It's very similar in color to Papier Plume's Desire, which came out a few months back. Um, and then Monteverde's Blueberry Muffin is a little bit more on the redder side of purple. Uh, Caveco also came out with a couple of other inks. Uh, one is their Pearl Black as well as their royal blue. And I kind of find both of these to be a little bit more saturated than the summer purple. This is what the bottle looks like. It's 50 milliliters. Um, it has a really large neck to it and deep enough to where you could fit any nib in here. So it's a nice bottle and a nice ink as well. And here we go with the rest of the writing sample. Um, as I mentioned before, this premium nib really offers a buttery feel to it. Um, the standard Quebeco nibs are very nice, uh, but this is nice as well. You're not going to get a lot of line variation out of here, um, but I do find the, the ink flow to be a bit greater than the standard nib uh, in regard to reverse writing. It's just okay, as you saw in the previous example. And then in regard to some fast writing, there's no issue with the feed keeping up at all. 
So here we have the AL Sport in Vibrant Violet. Uh, like I said before, this is a model, just the sport model in general, that's really grown on me, uh, that uh, I've grown to appreciate it for what it is, which is a fantastic pocket pen. And uh, this Vibrant Violet is a good addition to their lineup. Uh, as well as the premium nib. I was pleased with the way the premium nib performed as well. So I feel that both are well worth checking out. Uh, until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.